It's good to hear about this project related to climate change as it is a global challenge. Um, my research at University of Sydney was about one of the world's worst invasive species, which is the cane toad, Rhinella marina. This animal was introduced to tropical Australia in 1935 and it has been widely spreading around that area since then. And um, I did my research along the southern parts of Australia where the cooler climate is. I studied the consequence of abiotic conditions, uh, specifically the temperature on various life stages of these invasive uh, cane toad. My field studies show that the available ponds often average around 20 degrees Celsius, which is 10 degrees Celsius lower than in many areas of the toad's native range or its Australian tropics. However, with the climate change, the rise of temperature can affect the pond temperature increase and provide suitable breeding grounds for these invasive toads. So this can lead uh, these introduced species to spread further to the southern parts of Australia. This gradual movement can adversely affect the biodiversity of that novel environment because Many species in that environment, specifically the predators, have not exposed to these newly introduced animal and that can adversely affect the food chain and ultimately it can affect the natural balance of that novel environment. Hi, I'm Dr. Vika Vijay Tunde. I did my PhD at University of Sydney with Professor Rich Shine at the renowned Shine Lab. The major objective of my research was to study the southern invasion of cane toad, Renella marina. It's considered as one of the world's worst invasive species. This cane toad has first introduced to Australia in 1935 as a failed attempt to control cane beetle. To date, they have successfully colonized the Australian tropic and subtropics, spreading to the northwestern Australia and to the eastern coastal line. It is observed that they have caused widespread mortality in native predators who attempt to ingest meat highly toxic invaders, so that it is appeared that invasion of cane toads have serious negative impact on Australian native biodiversity and its natural balance, which eventually affects the human life. The successful establishment of cane toads in Australia is primarily depends on successful breeding in utilizing different types of spending sites, availability of predators and competitors, fecundity, which is the hatching success of the eggs, ability to breed throughout the year, and resilience to high temperature conditions. Models predict the cane toads invasion continue to further south, but they have ignored the potential of cane toads to tolerate and adapt to adverse environmental conditions such as high pH or high salinity or lower temperature. Such adaptations could influence the ability of toads to disperse. However, eventual distribution of cane toads in these areas may be limited by its biopanistic tolerance. Recorded observations in the varied habitats in their invasion front include frontal sand dunes 
acidic areas of coastal volumes and bogs. Such observations expresses the physiological plasticity of roads to novel habitats. So that it is vital to predict their potential distribution. To do so, we need to understand their tolerance to abiotic and biotic conditions. My study was intended to determine the consequence of larval life history status and embryonic stages of thin roads to vary pH, salinity, and temperature conditions and to explore one biotic interaction arising with the southern spread of roads, the mosquito fish, Gambusia holbrookii. My study sites were located in the southern edge in their invasion front, which includes Yemba, Belronde, Tweedshead, Belina, Lismo, Tuvumba, and Mahulumba. Also, already colonized areas of Cam, Townsville, and Darby. I carried out both field and laboratory experiments. I collected the water quality parameters of water pH, salinity, and temperature of the possible spawning sites in their invasion front and also the spawning sites in their already colonized area. I used thermochrome I buttons to collect the diurnal variation of temperature in the pond water. Also, I used handheld multiparameters to collect the pH and salinity of the pond water. The measurements that I have carried out in the pond water in their southern edge show incredible variation of the abiotic conditions compared to its uh, native range. The pH range from pH 4 to 10 and the salinity ranged from 0 parts per thousand to 4 parts per thousand and pond water temperature ranged from 16 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius which is 10 degrees lower than its native range. I have used these abiotic data to conduct laboratory studies. I obtained viable eggs from adult stores from induced breeding using hormones. I collected those uh, male and female adult stores from their invasion front and from the already colonized area. I exposed those viable eggs into different environmental conditions that I have observed in their invasion front. I carried out laboratory studies to evaluate the toad's embryonic and larval stages responses to these extreme environmental conditions. I recorded the hatching success of the eggs, percentage la uh, survival of larvae, metamorphic age, metamorphic weight, and the percentage mortality of toad's larvae. I found that Early life stages of thin roads are resilient and can cope with relatively extreme environmental conditions. Hatching factors of eggs were high at low pH, whereas rates of survival and larval development were enhanced by high pH. Eggs and tadpoles tolerate the most saline conditions. Paradoxically, lower temperatures may enhance rather than reduce recruitment of thin toads at least the areas where the pond water reach or exceeds 20 degrees Celsius. So the big question is, what will happen with global warming and climate change? The global warming will increase the pond water temperature, which will facilitate and enhance the availability of possible breeding sites for kangaroos. As my study overall shows, 
that the eggs and larval life history stages of plain toad can tolerate wide variation of form temperature at least from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. The global warming is likely to facilitate rather than constrain continued southward expansion of the toad invasion front in eastern Australia. Thank you.